and this is seed styles in today's video we're going to be learning how to make what we saw at the beginning of this video my client got this satin and this is what she bought for me to line in it i did not get the things myself she brought everything so i'll be using this zipper for this tutorial so let's go straight Today. I've gone ahead to cut my block. I've cut my block out, and each one is fold into two. This will serve as my front, and this will serve as my bag. The length, the half length is 14. I have marked as 14 here. I mark it in two places, so I'll go ahead and connect the two points together to get a straight line. Like this. Now, the measurement of this is my shoulder is 14. Into seven, but I'll be leaving it at eight. I'm leaving it at eight. When I trim it, when I finish, I will still go ahead and trim it. Okay. I mark my eight here. And remember, I've left a, a zipper allowance at the back. For the back pattern, I left a zipper of allowance of 1.5 inch. This my client always requests for enough zipper allowance, so I left 1.5 inch as my zipper allowance. And this is for a child, you don't need all those shaping of zip line and the rest, the zip will just align perfectly so I've left a zipper line a zipper allowance of 1.5 inches so as I mark my shoulder measurement I'll go ahead and take and get my shoulder slow get my shoulder slow I'll go down by three quarter of an inch then my neck width I will mark 2.5 as my neck width. After I finish, it will be, it will be, after I finish using my lining to turn it, to go down to 3 inches. I don't want it to be more than that, 3 inches. The neck depth, I will be leaving it at 3 inches for the front. 3 inches for the front one inch for the back so one inch or three quarter of an inch the other one the back is not that low let me leave it at one inch so you determine your own you determine your own then i'll connect it Even the front that I went down by three inches is kind of too low for me because I'm still going to add half inch joining allowance on the shoulder line. And once you add that half inch, it will increase the depth of your neckline by half inch. Then I connect my shoulder slope to my neck line. Like so. Now, the depth of my front neckline, I will reduce it. I don't want it that low. I will leave it at 2.5 as well. Because when I add half inch up here, it makes it 3 inches. And I will still use half inch to attach the lining to it. That will be 3.5. It's too low for a child. 
That 3.5 is too low for a child. So I'll connect the front neckline. Remember, it's no longer 3 inches, it's 2.5. 2.5 plus the half inch allowance on the shoulder for the shoulder joining makes it 3 inches. So if I mark, if I check from the shoulder half inch allowance that I added just now, it will be 3 inches. Can we see? Then when I join the shoulder, it will still be that 2.5 inches. I will now use half inch to join the lining. It will go by to 3 inches. It will be exactly 3 inches. So the depth will not be that much. So this is it. Now on the armhole, on the shoulder slope, I will determine my armhole. My armhole here is the length of my armhole is seven inches. Seven inches is too much for this girl. It's not, it does not have breasts. That seven inches is too much for her. Oh, another way to do it is to divide the bust line above circumference by six whatever you get you add one inch one and a half inch allowance you have one and a half inch and that will give you your boss your armhole sky for now let me use six inches i'll use six inches for her six inches then on this mark i will be taking my cross measurement my my potential designer ah on this mark i'll be taking my my boss measurement my boss is 29 29 divided by 4 It's seven one quarter. Seven one quarter. I will add an inch of of ease allowance. Then I will add two inches for sewing allowance. You know, children. The time I took the measurement, and now my not be the same. It's been a while. So I need to add ease allowance. She must have been big now. I will add 2 inch allowance which will be 10 3 quarter so I mark my 10 3 quarter here then her her boss uh, half length is uh, half length is 25 25 divided by 4 is 6 one quarter six one quarter this style when you look at it very well there's no need for that there's no need for that on this style because this the styles that is there covers everywhere so there's no need for that but you can still go ahead and add that if you want but i'm not going to add a dart to mine so 6.5, I will add half inch for east, which is 6, 6 1 quarter plus half inch for east, which is 6 3 quarter. Then I will add 2 inch seam allowance, which is 9 3 quarter. In making children clothes, you need to add enough allowance because they grow every day. They add every day. So if you add enough allowance and they want to use the cloth for long, they can still go and open it. So try and make add enough allowance for you as well. Now at this point I'm going to mark whatever I've marked on my shoulder line. I'll mark it down here and connect the two points together so that I will get my armhole curve. 
my kick there. Connect it like so. Then I'll get the middle of this. which is three inches here. I'll come in by half inch. And then I'll connect the curve together using my pattern master. Or any armhole curve of your choice. So this is my front armhole. And then I use this to connect my back Ample. Like so. so guys this the one that is in the deep one is for my front the shallow one is for my back armhole and this is all for the cut marking of this i'll go ahead and cut it out so i've cut the two together Remember, I'm cutting the front and back together. But when you reach this armhole area, you first of all cut out the back armhole. The first one, which is the shallow one, cut it out like this. And then when you come on the other this side, you cut out your back neckline first. Daddy, you're always singing song for them. My boy is always singing song for you guys. Yeah? He's asking you people to subscribe. Uh, subscribe. Subscribe to our channel. Cutting it, you cut it on the half inch allowance that you added at the shoulder line. Now, I'm going to remove the back. First of all, I will cut it open. Remember, it's on photo. I got the zip allowance open. Cut it open like this, then remove the front. This is my back. I'm going to use this to cut out my lining, and I will use hair to gum it. I like to gum it to give it a little weight. I will gum both the lining and the and the main fabric so I'll go ahead and trim out my front neckline trim out my front neckline like so then trim out my front ankle so the difference between the front and back is the shape of the armhole the shape of the neckline and the zipper allowance at the back those are just the difference between those. So we're going to be working on the upper part first. After we've done that, we will now start working on the back. So guys, I'm going to use this to cut the front, the lining, and I'll gum it, and then I'll come and show us the next step that we need to take. So guys, I'm gonna help to cut my lining. I've cut my lining to it and then I've gone ahead to gum it with my hair stay. This is my front gum with my hair stay. This is my back gum with my hair stay. And I've also gone the lining with my hair stay. This is my front lining. I've used my hair stay to gum it. It gives it weight and your makes your work look to look neater. When you gum it with your hair, hair stay like this. And this is the bag as well. I'm gonna help to gum it with my hair stay. So the next step we're going to be doing now is to join, take it to our sewing machine and join the shoulder. I will join, I'm going to be joining the lining separate from the bodies. This is for children and you want your work to be professional and very neat. So I'll go ahead and join it on my shoulder line like this. Using half inch. Remember we added half inch for our shoulder line. 
so i will go ahead and join it using my half inch i will join it using my half inch allowance that i left when i was cutting it then i will go ahead and shape it and join the side seam as well then i'll go ahead and do the same thing with my lining and i'll come and show us the next step to do remember on the shoulder line when i was taking my shoulder measurement i added one inch extra allowance instead of half of an inch i'm going to trim that i will measure my shoulder line like this can we see what we're having here more than enough her shoulder is 14 here and what i'm having here also what i need because i'm going to attach a sleeve to this so i will be needing 15 half inch on this side half inch on the other side to attach my sleeve to the body so 15 is what i will be needing but this is 18 so extra three inches is added to this so i'll be taking one and a half on this side up and one and a half on this side off like so and then we shape it don't worry about the armhole shape you are still going to trim your armhole shape you shape it like this so that you eliminate all these ones then the same thing on this side trim it off so this armhole is still serving as our back armhole can we see it's still our back armhole and then now you now go ahead and trim off your front armhole and trim it off with half inch or quarter of an inch it doesn't have to be too deep so can we see i've got in my front armhole and then i'll do the same thing on this side then I'll go ahead and trim off the back like that, trim off the lining as well. Exactly what I did on here, I will do the same thing with both the back and the front. <clears throat> so guys, this is it. The length. Remember, our length is 14. This is it. So now, what I need to do now is I will now shape it and go and join the side. So my balls is 28. 28 is 14, but divided by 2 is 14. Then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and half inch for is allowance on this other side my boss my half waist is 24 which is 12 here then i have one two three four and half inch for his allowance so i'll go ahead and mark my two inch here mark my two inch on this other side as well then the same thing on the other side I have to tell you that we added two two inch allowance. I add the same thing on this other side. So guys, I've gone ahead to lock the side seam of the lining as well as the bodies. And the bodies have done it inside out. I've Train or the armhole, adjust your armhole to your fitting. Then I will fold, I fold the zipper allowance. Remember, I added one and a half inch for my zipper allowance. I'm gonna have to fold it, and I use a a, a running stitch on it. The highest 
number on my machine. Mine is five. I use it to run a gather stitch around this area. And then I iron it open. And this is how my body looks like. This is the back. That's the zip line. And this is the front. Remember, I told us that I like adding hair uh, stay to mine. You can see the difference between this one that have hair stay on it and this one that does not have hair stay. The texture is different. It's looking nice and beautiful. So go ahead and add your hair stay to yours as well. And then the next thing that we're going to be doing is our style line you know this dress have two different style line the first one is some wave something around this area like like fan like fan like all this ham fan so we are going to cut a piece of material it has four pleats but mine i want it to be three I don't want it to be that far. You can make yours four, you can make yours two, any amount you want it to be. So you get the middle of this fabric, and I've cut my own. The length is 10. The length is 10. Then you come down from your neckline here. From your neckline, the front neckline, you come down by two inches. By the time you turn, use half inch to turn your lining it will remain one and a half so then this is where your star line will be starting these two inches that you came down with is where your star line will be starting here then you iron it on fold to get the middle of your of your pieces and what you are going to do you are not just going to put it like that is unfold i cut it into two is 10 on open is 20 unfold is 10 then i will go ahead and use my hair stay to gum it then i will use a a, a gummy a gum stay again before if it, let's say it's ankara you just use your gum stay stretch to it and gum it but this is a satin fabric if I use my hair stay, it will be having some wrinkles, wrinkles around it. And I don't want that. I want everything to be smooth. So what I'm going to do first, I will use hair stay to gum it. Then I will now use my gummy stay and gum it. Me, I would like to use the, uh, the medium gum stay. If you like, you can use a paper stay to yours. I will use a medium gum stay to gum it. Then on this area, after I've gummed it, I will open it like this and put a hair hemming gum in between this area. Put like two lines, double the hem gum. I will double it inside and fold it like this and iron it very well to get that sharp edge around this area. If you look at the picture or if you look at the the picture at the beginning of this tutorial you will notice that this this edge is very sharp that is how you're going to get that sharp look put your hemming gum in between it and iron it very well it will be very sharp then you are going to pleat it after you've done that you iron it on fold again like this and get iron it and get the middle then you open it like this and pleat it on the middle this side should be in the middle on the waistline here it should be on the middle give it one fold a pleat there you can measure yours the second pleat there measure yours but before you do that make sure you sew this place close and the other one too like this like that you sew it close then this is how it will be can we see what we are getting this is how it will be like this then you do the same thing with the other side 
do the same thing with the other side in the middle if you bring it to the middle this other side up here will not reach the middle can we see what we are getting you bring it like this a pleat there another pleat and the third one make sure you measure it and let them be equal another pleat towards this area and this is what you get can we see what we'll be getting around this area so this is what after you've done that put your hemming your paper stay your gum and the stay iron it make sure it's well ironed this is what you'll be getting around this area before you put the other tire line it has another one before we put it on before that we will go ahead and do this one first before we now put the other one before we, i will show us how to go about the other style line so this is how this one will look like so guys i'm gonna have to play, to iron it with my hair stay and to go me with my hair stay and i realized that it's too thick I don't want to add the gum stay to it so what I'm going to do straight is I will place my hemming gum in the middle I've ironed it into two and I've got a crease on it like this so I will place my hemming gum on the middle in between the two sides in that crease line I will place my hemming gum there I will leave one inch on this side one inch on this side because I'm going to turn it and, and sew it close so I would I want to triple this hem gum, this hemming gum, so that it will be firm. I will triple it like this. Then I will go ahead and do the same thing like this. I will do that but for the first continue let me iron this one first then go ahead and close it before i will come and and, and put it all over the body so i will iron it so guys can we see how sharp this this edge is can we see how sharp it is so you can see that there's no need to place the hemming gum, the gum, paper gum, or gum stay, anyone you want to call it, no need for that. Can we see how this is? So it will still stand. Can we see? See the, can we see what it's giving us? So it will still stand. Then I'm going to fold it into two again like this and reduce on the side i don't want the side to be equal with the middle the side is not equal so i'm going to reduce it on the side on the folded edge i will mark like 6.5 inch it's okay for me and this is my ruler my straight ruler you can use your the curve side so i will use the curve side i will use it like this and connect it like this a little curve shape it like that then trim it towards that side trim it like so trim all the unwanted parts and this is the shape that we have like this you can pleat it with using your iron can we see the middle then i will not pleat it like this put the other star line the other star line will be covering it like so it will be on it like so yeah i told us it has two star lines so the other one too will come like this and cover it so this is how it will be let me go ahead and close the side i will close the side pleat and attach it like this and come and show us how to go about the other one so guys i've gone ahead to attach it 
and this is what we'll be having let me turn it this way this is how this side will look like now the next style line on this outfit is i'm going to it will be like this pleating it the next one will be pleated on it like this like this i will pleat it on top like this and it has something in the middle but it's not outside it's inside you determine how high you want it to be so from my waistline i want it to stop somewhere here around this five inches from the waist up to five inches this is where it will stop this other star line will stop here i will iron it i will iron everything smoothly then i'll go ahead and fold it like this iron it and get the middle then i'll open it and take it to my sewing machine I will just pick small, small, and so, so like, see this. This is what I'm going to be putting in the middle. So I will sew this one. I cut a stretch of three quarter of an inch. It's not up to one inch. Three quarter of an inch. Then I wind ahead to fold it into two, and I stitch it by quarter of an inch. So what is here is half inch. Then I inserted my chest wording. I inserted chest wording inside. To get this thickness that you are seeing to get this what you are seeing here i inserted my thickness inside my chest wording inside that's why it's looking like this then i cut the length of my where i want this i want the star line to stop can we see can we see so what i will do now let me iron it then i will show us the next thing to do and then I'll fold it in the width form on the width side and iron to get the middle. So it's a reason why you need to iron it like this to get the middle. So this is my middle now. I'll go ahead on my sewing machine and pick the middle from the good side. I'll pick, I'll be picking it some more, pick it with quarter of an inch, like this, pick the next one too, and sew it with, with a one inch, sew it with one inch, you pick it, 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 and sew it like that, when you finish sewing it, in that middle, if you check the style very well, you will notice that this uh, stripe that I form, you put it in the middle. It has a little bit of picking at that middle before you will now gather this one to fit your waistline. So you have to get that style for this for this stripe. So I will go ahead to my weaving machine. You will do that picking on your right side to my sewing machine and pick it i will do that and come and show us how it looks like so guys this is what i was talking about you pick it pick it small in that middle that you are young to get you picking it small and so you lock it for just one inch the length of your stitches should be nothing more than white and even if it is less it is even better but at most one inch at most one inch and make sure you trim all the dead threads don't leave it like that you pick it again very close to this other stitch the stitch should be very close to the other one. Pick it just small and stitch it. See what you get. The stitches, see what you get. I'm stitching it and then I'm using my 
my the um, the fold, this rope that I've created as a, I don't know what to call it. I'll be measuring it, using it to measure the length of my gathered, of my stitches. And another thing, when you finish stitching it, can you see it has given us a template on how to pick? When you place it, you just gather it like this, like this, bring all these ones. It will not affect this middle. Do not affect this thing. So this thing will still be showing. I will place it inside like this. We we'll place it inside like so and pick it and stitch it so that it's dark. It will show like so. We will see when we we'll get to that part. We we'll cross it. So I will put my glue gun in the middle like this. That middle line is still showing. So you follow it like this with my glue gun. I follow it like so. Then I place this in the middle. So can we see? Now I'll go ahead and flip it like so, like so, then I'll take it to the, to the sewing machine again and fold it, make sure it's firmly fold and then I will stitch it, I will stitch it very close from this, this point up to where it stops. I will fold it like so and stitch it like that. Then I will bring it for us to see. So guys, this is what we will be having. After stitching it, can we see, I'm going to have to stitch it very close. You stitch it very, very close for it to be firm inside. So this is what we will be having. Now I'm going to fold this side in. I will fold this side in like this. Fold this side in, make sure it's well aligned. Don't want any funny, funny look on your, on your style. Make sure you fold it in like so. What you have here, this is six. It's not bad, you can still leave it at this six. I'm going to leave it at this six. And so let me place it on our dress and let's see how it will be. This is how it will be. Can we see? This is how it will be. So I will go ahead and attach it. I will open my bodies. The zip line is open, I will open it and then I will go ahead and place it on it and attach it round. So guys, this is how it looks like. I decided not to put it through to the back. The reason is so that if the dress is tied or the girl is bigger, if she add weight, you will be able to adjust it for her without tempering with the style so i only put it in front and this is how it looks like after attaching it it's coming out so cute and beautiful i wish i have a baby girl see how beautiful it's looking she has left half inch here to attach it this part we have to lap we have to cover the joining at the down and it will have to touch the down part a little so Let's go straight to the, make sure this one is on the middle. Let's go straight to the down part. So guys, the down part is a, a box split. It's a box split and the total length of my gown is 44. So I fold this thing into two, it's doubled. I fold it into two 
and then they have started for bleaching it. My wheel is 5.5, the box is 5.5. So you place it on the floor like this or on your table and this is a plea, one plea. The second one, you pick it like this and pleat it. Then you measure it, your 5.5. And this is exactly 5.5. Use your pin to pin it. Make sure everything is equal, both the down and on this side. Make sure they are equal so that one side will not be coming out. Use your pin and pin it down. Then you do the same thing. Pick it like this, pick it like this and bring it towards this side and make sure that the pleats are very close. Pick it like this and bring it towards this side like so. Make sure you arrange everything. The down part and the upper part, everything should be equal. This is another, I'm trying to form the second one. Then you pick it again. You pick it again and turn it this way. Turn it this way, make sure everything is aligned and then you measure it. This is another 5.5. So that's how we're going to do it until we get to our length, to our uh, full length, to the, our waistline. And when you're doing that, the starting point, you'll be leaving one and a half inch or the no amount of allowance you left for your zipper allowance. You leave it on the other side and you leave it on, the, on this other side at the end or towards this side as well one and a half if it's one inch you added for your zipper allowance you leave one inch if it's one and a half inch you add or two inch you leave that exact amount before you start your pleating so that when you fix your zip they won't be it will not be looking funny at the back everything those two uh, shape let's say this is this is my the end of this other part and i pleat it like this towards this side what will be remaining, I will remain here, will be my zipper allowance. Let's say one, one and a half. I added my own one and a half. I will leave you one and a half inch as my zipper allowance here. So that when I attach my zipper, this fold and the other one will come like this. The zipper will be in the middle. So it will not be looking funny at this side. Some people, they will leave like, let's say you added one and a half inch for the, on the upper part. Then when you are pleating, when they are pleating this side, they will now, they will not bother to even measure or determine, leave the allowance they put. They will just fold it. When they want to attach their zipper or attach this down part to the upper part, because of the one inch or one and a half inch allowance they put, you have to pull it like this. And once you pull it like this, the fold or the pleat, you've, you've tempered with it it will not be looking somehow after you've attached your zipper so make sure you measure your zipper allowance so i will go ahead and pleat all of them like that and as i'm pleating it i'm i'm uh, using my office pin my tailor pin to fold it to hold it i will hold it down with my tailor pin then i will take it to my table and iron it and when you are pleating it like this make sure you are measuring it to your waistline and I'm, as i'm doing it i will be check, checking it to make sure that it on my waist is exactly the same thing with my waistline so can we see it just really like one pleat for me to get everything can we see where my waist plus allowance zipper allowance see where it stops so one single pleat will be enough for me. A pleat towards this side, then my zipper allowance will be enough for me. So I will go ahead and do that. Then I will come and show us how it looks like. 
Then I will take it to my table and iron it, make sure I iron everything very well. And then I will show us the next step to do, to take. So guys, I've pleated mine and I've ironed it down. And this is what it looks like. I make sure I get it to get the middle. This this middle support will match with the middle of your upper part. So I have to take my time to get the middle. When you are pleating it, the first of all, mark it open. I don't know if you can see. Before I start my pleating, I open and then I got the middle. Can we see? I got the middle, then I started the pleating. I pleat on this side, pleat on this side, make sure that this is the middle. Pleat it. That was how I did to get this box split and this line will be exactly on my middle. If you don't do it that way, you end up, your middle will end up on one of the box. But if you want the middle to be on one of the, if you want one of the box to be your middle, you can leave it that way. But me, I want it this way. I want this to be my middle. So I have to mark it, then I start the pleating to get my exact waist measurement plus my zipper allowance. So you go ahead and do the same and then let's continue. Now, I'll go ahead and attach it to my, can we see? This is my middle. If I place it like this. So guys, this is it. I'm gonna attach it. I'm gonna attach it to my, to my upper part. And this is how the pleat looks like. Uh, I've added it very well. My pin is still on it. I want it to be firm before I remove the pin. So this is how my pleating looks like. And this is the upper part. This is how the upper part designs looks like. And the upper part in front.
I'm still going to free it. All right. This is slit. So this is slit. I want to put my hard net. And the hard net. Let me bring it so that will show us what to do. So the net. This is the net. I will cut the length of the net will be shorter than the length of the lining with one inch. Remember the length of the main fabric is longer than the length of the lining with four inches. So this one will be shorter than the length of the lining with one inch. Lining is 25 in length. One inch of 25 is 24. And the width that is the way circumference. I'm going to gather it as well. 73 by 24. So guys, I'm going ahead to gather it down. I give you some pleats down here. If you want your own to be fuller, you can see, you can even add your pleats. You can add it all over the body. But my client says it should not be that full. Now I've run a gather stitch on this one. I will gather it up like the way I did with the lining. You pick one side of it, pick one side. This is for the sake of beginners in our midst. And start, pick one side and start pulling it gradually. Please don't let it cut. If it cut, you have to go and start all over again. So you pick it gradually, you gather it, gather it, gather it until. You reach your waist circumference. So I'll go ahead and do that and show us after I gather it. And this is how mine looks like. If you do use this method to follow these steps, you have something like this. So the next steps I'm going to be doing is to attach it to my lining. The next thing I'm going to do now is to use this to turn the neckline. The reason why I joined the lining separate from the bodies is because I want a neat finishing. The good part of the lining will be facing the good part of the of the material, and then the shoulder. I will make sure that the shoulder lines tally with each other. The shoulder of the lining. I will join it like this and pin it. Then the other side as well. I will join it and pin it. And you can see everything aligned half equally. This is the shoulder line lining and material. This one as well. See everything entirely perfectly. So I will go ahead and join them. But before I do that, I'll go ahead and overlock each and every one. That's why the fact that I'm going to be hiding all the seam, I'll still go ahead and overlock it. I want everything to be neat, both in and out, both the lining and the main fabric. I want everything to be neat. When you open inside, everywhere will be neat. So go ahead and overlock yours. But if you don't have a overlocker machine, please try and use wires to lock it. Or you cut a piece of your lining, since this one is bulky, cut a piece of the lining and use it to turn the seam so that everywhere will be all the seams will be hidden and your work will be neat. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and overlock it, overlock the zip line, both the material, the main fabric, and the lining. I will do that and then I will go ahead and turn the neckline. And bring it for us to see and show us the next step to take. So guys, I've attached the lining to it. I'm using it to turn my neckline. And we see how neat and beautiful this is looking. I've gone ahead to weave everything of the log them. Inside is neat. Outside is neat. So, is how beautiful our whole gown is coming now. The next thing now that we're going to do is to cut the sleeve and fix our zipper. I've not ironed it. I'll go ahead and iron it. 
flat, iron it round. After attaching my lining to it, I went ahead to notch it and then I top stitch it to make it to relax. Can we see how it's relaxing without fixing, without iron? Also, I'll go ahead and iron it. Fix my zipper. Can we see what I did here? I've not when I was sewing it. I did not reach the zipper allowance. I left some inches away from the zipper line, like three quarter of an inch before the zipper line. This way, when I fix my zipper, I will use my lining to turn it perfectly. I'll go ahead and do that and then show us how it looks like, how neat it will look, how neat your outfit will look. All right. I'll go and attach that. Then for the sleeve, for the sleeve, the sleeve is like a cup, a cap sleeve. So I cut this one. I hope we all know how to cut our cap sleeve. And I'm doubling it as well, just like the way I did with every other thing. I'm going to double it. So I will fold it like this. This one is just for one sleeve. Then I'll bend it this way. This down part is on fold. Is on fold. Then I'll determine the length of my sleeve that I want. This one is six. I use six. My clients have to make it a little bit longer. So six. And then I will go ahead and cut it. Go ahead and cut it like this. I hope we all know how to cut our top sleeve. So this is my cap sleeve. This opening will be too much for that, for the armhole. So I will flip it a little bit on this side and a little bit on this side, like so. And the sleeve is free and it will be like this on our dress so guys i will go ahead when you are fixing it make sure it's like this on this side make sure it's like so and this place will be is wide it's not fitted make sure it's like this so i will go ahead i will i will press my own i will gum it i'm not going to leave it like this i will put my hem Haste it and gum it so that I give it that structure. So I'll go ahead and do that, attach them, attach the zipper, and then I'll come and show us the final look of our garment. This is the final look of our bow gown. See the neck, the lining. Now turn it, everything is neatly finished. The finishing of our outfit matters a lot. It's what is the big deal when you come to sewing. So can we see the see the ample? I've used the lining to turn it round. Can we see I've turned the ample with the lining? I've used the arm the lining to hide my zipper allowance. This is it. Can we see how neat and professional the zip is? This is the back. See what I was telling us about the about this place earlier on. Now you have to leave, you have to calculate it. The zip allowance that you left at the upper part, you will have to leave it on the down part. Can we see how everything is just relaxed and neat? So I'm going to be making a bow tie for this outfit. See how beautiful this is looking. I will be making a bow tie for my outfit.